As I was walking out of the worship center after one of our Ash Wednesday services this past week, I overheard the tail end of a conversation between a young school-aged boy and his mom. He was desperately trying to wipe off the ashen cross which he'd received in worship and which was now smeared all over his fingers and all across his forehead. So he was asking everyone with him to wait while he used the bathroom so that he could look in a mirror and wipe it off and wash his hands. To which his exasperated mother said, you can wait until we get home. It's not like it's permanent. I didn't have the heart to tell them then, and besides, they weren't exactly asking me. In fact, they weren't even talking to me, but actually, it is permanent, that cross. To be sure, you can remove the ashes, a clean cloth, and a little bit of water will easily and quickly wipe them away, but underneath, beneath the smudge of ash, lies another cross that no amount of wiping, washing, or scrubbing can ever remove. That cross was marked in oil at baptism by a pastor who said to you, you have been sealed by the Holy Spirit and marked with the cross of Christ forever. It's true that the oily residue marking that baptismal cross is completely invisible to the eye, but it is also true that the mark of that cross is indelible, entirely and absolutely permanent. Remember, your pastor proclaimed, you've been sealed and marked forever, which means there is nothing you can do, there is nothing you can try, there is nothing you can say, there is nothing, nothing at all that has the power to dislodge weaken, dissolve, or otherwise in any way wash away that cross or remove that mark or undo that seal. The Apostle Paul explained it this way. I am convinced, he said, that neither death nor life, nor angels nor rulers, nor things present nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. Did you hear that? There is nothing in all of creation that will be able to separate us from the love of God. The permanence of the cross on your forehead with which you have been sealed and marked is good news all the time. It tells you who you are, it reminds you to whom you belong, and it assures you how deeply you are loved. But it is especially good news as we begin this season of Lent. Here's why. Every single year, on this first weekend of Lent, we set out on our 40-day journey with the same gospel story. We read of Jesus' temptation. You know how it goes. Jesus was in the wilderness where he was under attack by the devil. Luke tells us that for the entire 40 days of his wilderness experience, Jesus ate nothing. He was famished. And that is when the devil struck. That is when he strategically began his assault, having waited until his target was hungry and weak and vulnerable. First, he tried to seduce Jesus with the promise of bread, then with the promise of power over all of the kingdoms of the world, and finally with the promise of protection. If you are the Son of God, the devil said, You can almost hear the smirk and the snarl in his voice. If you really are the Son of God, It was as much a challenge as a temptation, a challenge calling for evidence, evidence of identity, evidence of a relationship. If you are, show me. Prove it. Do you see what's going on here? For the devil, it really wasn't about bread 
or power or protection at all. It was all about and only about undermining Jesus' relationship with God and calling into question his identity. It was about eroding a relationship, getting a foothold in between God and Jesus. If you are the devil taunted, understand this. All the devil has ever wanted was to shift allegiance, trust, and confidence away from God and toward some tempting, though completely inadequate, substitution. Here, he offers, have some bread. Or take this authority and all the glory that goes with it. Or maybe you'd prefer some protection. Do you remember what happened just before Jesus went into the wilderness? Our reading provides a clue. It begins, Jesus, full of the Spirit, returned from the Jordan You only have to back up a chapter to see what Jesus was doing at the Jordan. Luke 3 reads, Now when all the people were baptized, and when Jesus also had been baptized and was praying, the heaven was opened, and the Holy Spirit descended upon him in bodily form like a dove, and a voice came from heaven, You are my son, the beloved, and with you I am well pleased. This is important because it tells us that when Jesus went into the wilderness, he went with the waters of the Jordan River still clinging to him, and he went with the name given to him by his Father in heaven still ringing in his ears, you are my son, the beloved. Just as there is no doubt that in the wilderness Jesus' identity was under attack, There is also absolutely no doubt that Jesus was secure in who he was, assured and certain from his baptism, you are my son, beloved. The devil didn't stand a chance. And that's why the cross on your forehead matters so much. We are in and out of the wilderness all the time. And while the temptations vary in the specifics, be it bread, power, and protection, or beauty, status, and wealth, or success, fame, and youth, at every turn, the devil is dead set upon calling into question your identity and threatening to undermine your relationship with God. But dear people of God, you know who you are. You know to whom you belong, and you know how deeply you are loved by a God who went all the way to the cross for you and for your transgressions. You've got a permanent mark on your forehead to remind you, lest you forget. You are a beloved child of God. So, in this first week of Lent, as we turn our faces toward whatever these 40 days hold for us, we would do well to remember that indelible cross of baptism and everything it tells us about who and whose we are. When we're tempted to take the easy route or to strive for that which glistens and shines or to turn away from what matters most, it's the cross on your forehead that tells you everything you need to know. You are a child of God, called Beloved. Author and artist Jan Richardson wrote a lovely piece about this text, and I conclude with an excerpt. She writes, If you would enter into the wilderness, do not begin without a blessing. Do not leave without hearing who you are. Beloved, named by the one who has traveled this path before you. I cannot promise this blessing will free you from danger, from fear, from hunger or thirst, from the scorching of the sun or the fall of the night, but I can tell you that on this path there will be help. I can tell you that you will know the strange graces that come to our aid only on a road such as this, that fly to meet us bearing comfort and strength, and that come alongside us for no other cause than to lean themselves toward our ear 
and with their curious insistence, whisper our name, Beloved, Beloved, Beloved. Amen.